Hello friends, this video on fiber and fabric part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So this was all about wool. Now let us look at the next natural fiber that is silk. Because silk is again another very common fabric which is used by us in our day to day life. So when I talk about silk, the first thing that strikes your mind may be the silk saris or the silk dresses now in silk sarees also if if you have ever been for to a saree shopping you would have heard that there are many different types of silk that, that exist now you will have different names when you go to a shop you, it may be a tussar silk it may be a muga silk uh, it may be a banarasi silk so there are so many different types of silk which are available and all of them vary in their price all of them vary in their quality even though they are all silk they are all the natural silk so now here in this section we will see from where do we obtain silk and from where do we obtain so many different varieties of silk and how do we process silk. So we will follow exactly the same method what we did for wool. So silk is obtained from silk worms. Now what are silk worms? Now have you seen butterflies? Now the way butterflies are silk moth they also look very similar to butterflies. They are called silk moth because they are like moths. But since silk is obtained from them, so they have been given the name of silk moth. Now, in some stage of their lifetime, they are silk worms. Like they are a worm-like creature which later becomes a silk moth. So, silk moth is basically their adult form. But sometime before they remain as silk worm. So, let's see what are silk worms. So, silk worms are the caterpillar stage in the life cycle of silk moth. So let's see how a silk worm looks like and how a silk moth is. This is a silk moth which resembles a butterfly and this is a silk worm which resembles any other worm. So it is like creepy and it crawls on the ground. So that's how a silk worm looks like. So now this is the adult stage of this particular insect and this one is the caterpillar stage. So this grows to later to form a silk moth. But during this stage of silk worm it produces silk. That's quite interesting, right? That a tiny worm is able to produce silk and silk is something which we go mad about wearing silk saris, silk clothes and so many other stuffs. So let's see how exactly silk worm produces silk. Now, before we do that, we need to understand the life cycle of silk moth. You should be clear that what, when exactly the silk worm stage comes in the life cycle of a silk moth. So before that, let's quickly distinguish between a male and a female silk moth. Now in silk moth, if you look at their appearance, you can easily distinguish between a male and a female. So normally a male silk moth is smaller in size when compared to the female one. Moreover, the male moth is more active and the female moth is less active. If you look more closely, you will see that the female moth has a bigger abdomen when compared to the male moth. That's because the female moth lays eggs. So the eggs are being stored inside this part. So that, that's why it has got some extra space to accommodate those eggs. So when we talk about the life cycle of silk moth, we will talk about the female silk moth because they are the ones who produce eggs. And then the eggs gradually grow and over a period of time, they become the silk moth. Like how babies are born, babies, I mean, a, a tiny babies are born and then gradually they start growing and after around 18 or 20 years, they become an adult. So in a similar way, there is a life cycle of the silk moth as well. So as I said, female moth has a bigger abdomen. So let's see how exactly the life cycle of silk moth looks like. So this from here, the life cycle starts. So this is the female silk moth and the female moth will uh, produce eggs and they will lay eggs. So you see the eggs are being laid and the eggs are generally laid on the leaves of the plants. Now different silk moths, they uh, have different fooding habits. Now different types of silk moth produce different types of silk. That's because the silk worm, different type of silk worm will produce different types of silk. Now let us take example of one of the most common type of silk which is called the mulberry silk. Why is it called mulberry silk? Because it is obtained from the silk worms which feed on the mulberry leaves. So mulberry is a plant 
So a lot of silkworms lives on these mulberry plants and the silk obtained from such silkworms is called mulberry silk. Now these, the female adult silk moth, it lays eggs. So this is where the eggs are being laid on the leaves of a plant and these eggs then will gradually grow to form a worm like structure called the silk worm. So that's how the silk worm is formed. Now once the silk worm is formed, what happens next? So this silk worm is also referred to as the caterpillar stage of a silk moth. Now before entering into the next stage, the next stage is called pupa. So you see here, this is the next stage which is pupa. Before becoming a pupa, what it does is it starts waving a net to hold itself. Like have you ever seen spiders making nets? So th that's more common right because you see it in your houses. So in a similar way, this silk worm, it starts waving a net. Now how he makes this net? By secreting a fiber protein. So it is like how we secrete saliva. Similarly, this silk worm also secretes some proteins and it moves itself in this pattern. So it will keep moving like this, like this, like this, like this. So gradually what happens and at the same time it is secreting some saliva like structure, some saliva like protein. So basically these proteins, it, it is forming a net like structure over a period of time. And this net like structure over a period of time hardens in presence of air. So when this net like structure, initially it is just saliva, but when that it is not actually saliva, it is some protein which is like saliva. So when that protein is exposed to air, it starts becoming hard. And this hardened protein later becomes the silk fiber. So that, that's how it happens. Now, when it start making this net like structure, it gradually forms this structure which is called cocoon. So you see it has formed a covering around itself and inside this cocoon, it now starts developing or it starts growing. So it forms pupa. So from the silk worm stage, it enters into the pupa stage. But basically this entire cocoon is formed by the silk worm. So that is why we say that silk is obtained from silk worm. Now inside this cocoon, from outside the cocoon will look like this and inside the cocoon would be the pupa and this pupa will then gradually keep growing and it will form the adult silk moth inside the cocoon itself. And then once it becomes the adult moth, so the adult moth will come out of the cocoon. And from where do we get the silk fibers? So the silk fibers are obtained from the cocoon. Once the adult silk worm has, uh, once the adult silk moth has gone out of it. So the silk fibers are obtained from cocoon because cocoon is nothing but it is made up of the silk fibers. It is made up of that uh, protein which is secreted by the silk worm and that protein being exposed to air, it becomes a hard structure which is called the silk fiber. Now different silk moths secrete different types of fibers. Now here, the, right now I was giving example of the mulberry silk worm, right? So this type of silk worm, they secrete a specific type of protein. So that is why and the type of protein that is secreted by the silk worm decides the type of silk that will be obtained from this particular silk moth. And that is why we get different types of silk like some of them are soft, some are coarse, some are shiny, some are rough and that is what we get as Kora silk, Kosa silk, silk, Muga silk, Tusser silk etc. So now you understand why do we have so many different types of silk in the market because there are many different types of silk worms as well and different types of silk worms secrete different types of proteins and these proteins later form silk fibers. So the proteins actually decide what would be the type of silk. So this is basically the life cycle of a silk moth. So here you saw uh, the entire process where it started with an adult moth. Now once this adult moth comes out of the cocoon, again the process continues. Again the adult moth will become capable of laying eggs and a female moth lays around hundreds of eggs at one time. And then these eggs hatch larvae and these larvae they are called caterpillars or the silkworms and the process continues over and over again. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. 
Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.